All right, we are going to be going over today uh, Remington James's videos, top five ways to curb hunger. I will share the screen with you here um, so you can see uh, what we're going to be getting into. But um, this, uh, I, I watched the first maybe three minutes of this video, thought it was quality enough that I would like to expand upon at least one of his points. So the vast majority of the video I have not seen yet. And, uh, and that's kind of the point. I like these live reactions and, um, it's not really even a reaction. I want to expand upon it and teach you guys it from my perspective and maybe even go a little bit deeper than his 13 minute video can provide us. So let's go ahead and hop on into it. I'm just going to press play and then we can go from there. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat. Um, and if you have any prayer requests or anything, leave them in the comments or the chat. Uh, and as always, I'll be praying for you guys. Um, I add it to a book. Uh, and I literally pray over that book every day. So if you have any prayer requests, especially revolving, your, re revolving around your weight, um, then please leave that in the chat. All right, let's go ahead and uh, play. Today, we are talking about how to control your hunger. If you are trying to lose weight, that means you are creating a calorie deficit and eating less calories than your body needs in a day. But the one thing that tends to derail most people, I mean, I would say everybody, me included, is hunger. You know how it gets. That first week of dieting might be easy. Second week, not as easy, but manageable. And by that third, fourth, fifth week, when you really start seeing the results, you are craving everything, no matter what. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about here is that whenever you start seeing results, you are craving everything. That's what he said there. Um, he's very he's very correct. It, it kind of sounds like, or I mean, he's not implying this. I don't think he's implying this, but it, a person might take this to be that you know you've been going and you're getting hungrier because you're tired of the diet now, and as time goes on, you get hungrier and you start to want to eat more. The reason you're wanting to eat more is as you lose weight, your horn hormone ghrelin is going to increase. Your hunger hormone is going to increase. When you lose 10 pounds, you're going to be a little hungrier. When you lose 15, you're going to be even hungrier. When you lose 50, you're going to be much hungrier. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but your hormone, your hunger hormone is going to spike whenever you lose weight. So as you progress, you're going to have to get better and better and better at getting, uh, well, we're going to get into some of those tips. So you're going to have to get better at the whole diet portion so that you can continue to have success. So let's go ahead and hop back into the video. Where you go, no matter what you do, you got food on your mind. And the only way to push through that is to find a way to control that hunger. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over my top five tips to control that hunger and to crush it that way. The results we make while we are losing weight and getting ready for the beach this summer are everlasting. So if y'all are ready to get another epic video underway, then as always, man, I'm here to do it for you. Let's do it! Yeah! So the first tip I'm going to give you, which is going to be especially helpful to those of you out there that struggle with binge eating. I am a chronic binger that's been the downfall of almost every diet I've ever done. I get to a good point on my diet. I feel like I'm looking good. I'm really lean. I'm really starting to see all my abs come in fully. And then I eat until I'm absolutely miserable. So if you are a binger, this is probably the single best tip I can give you. So number one, what we want to do is eat high volume, low calorie, dense foods. And for layman's terms, what that means essentially is that you want your food to be as big as possible from a size perspective while containing the minimum amount of calories. The ultimate goal here being that it's going to take you a long time to eat it and it's really going to fill your stomach up. Taste your stomach. Okay, so that is the first big point and that is what I want to hit here. So how can, the question here is how can low calorie, high volume foods help you or what are those and how can that help you lose weight? So as he said there, High volume, low calorie foods are going to literally take up more space on your plate. It has nothing to do with, I mean, it does have stuff to do with the, the volume of the food, but it literally takes up more space in the plate, which means it takes up more space in your stomach. So a great example of this, cauliflower rice over regular rice, you're going to have a lot less calories, a lot less carbs, and you're going to have a lot more food if you match the amount of calories that are in regular rice. Um, Greg Doucette's protein ice cream, that serving is huge. Um, if you know, if you, you've never heard of his cookbook, Greg Doucette, go look him up. 
and you will see that uh, a lot of his um, recipes, because some a lot of them are out there on YouTube, uh, are just big um, protein pizza, anabolic pizza. Uh, typically, you're going to be making the crust out of something like egg whites, and you know, cooking it a, a special way to remove all of the cal not all, but a lot of the calories from the crust, and choosing the right toppings is going to literally give you a big pizza like that big for 300, 350 calories. It's insane. So that's what we're trying to do with high volume, low calorie dense foods. That's what they mean. So there's all kinds of food swaps you can do with that. Fat free cheese is a good example. I mean, you can use the exact same amount of cheese you always do for 45 calories instead of 90, 110, whatever. If you do this with every single ingredient in a recipe, as, as much as you can, you know, you can't go lower calorie chicken usually, but you can get leaner cuts of steak. You can get leaner, um, ground Turkey or ground. I mean, usually you'd want to be going ground Turkey over ground beef in the first place. And then you would want to go for the leanest ground Turkey you can find. Um, things like that are going to lead you to eating literally more food. And that is good. That's what you want, especially as you lose weight and your hunger increases, we need to get you more food for less calories or the same amount of calories. Ideally, you know, if you've been progressing and you don't need to cut your calories, you don't want to cut your calories. You just want to increase the volume of your food so that you're happy on your diet and you can continue on it. That is what is so important about that point. And that is why low calorie, high density foods can help you crush it on your weight loss goals. Let's get into the next point. He's going to keep talking about this point for a little bit here, though between 20 30 minutes for it to actually send the signals to brain, brain to tell you that you're full from what you're eating so if you're eating things like fried chicken wings each wing can have about 150 200 calories if it's deep fried you order it order a 20 you might realistically be full after 10 of them which is still a lot of calories and not a lot of volume but those signals aren't going to go to your brain until you've already wiped all 20 out and then you're miserable we've all been there before you order a pizza you're starving you sit down you can eat half three quarters a full large i've eaten a full large pizza and the whole time you're eating it you think you're hungry and then you get to the end of it and you're stuffed so what a higher volume, lower calorie food is going to do is not only going to keep those calories low, but it's going to take you a long time to eat it. I've always been someone that is a speedy. That is a really good point. Fantastic point. So if you are, the, the question here is timing. And I know it's almost cliche. You've heard it. People say eat slower because the signal from your stomach to your brain takes a certain amount of time. It's kind of lame advice, like it feels like lame advice, not very fun advice, but it is true. If you are able to take longer to eat your food, then you will get that response that you are no longer hungry quicker, but also you won't, you won't want to overeat when it's, I mean, if you, if you're eating for 30 minutes, are you really going to want to keep eating? Whereas if you eat, I mean, maybe you do, but comparatively, if you eat for five minutes, there's a good chance that even if you're full, you're going to want to continue eating. You only got five minutes out of that meal. I mean, we like eating. We want to eat more. So again, the question here is how does slowing down impact your weight loss and what things can you do to help you slow down? Well, slowing down helps you because literally you get that signal to the brain. And that is what is so helpful is, oh, I'm full. But the big key here is the, the low calorie, high density foods. They literally take you longer to eat. So, uh, Greg Doucette again, talks about this all the time. His, um, smart pop popcorn versus the skinny pop that you see the skinny pop. And, uh, I mean, boom, chicka pop, all those in the grocery store, they have great marketing. If you look at them, they're regular popcorn. There's nothing different about them. I don't know if they're buttered or what. I mean, there is nothing, nothing different about it. They have the same amount of calories as you would just movie theater popcorn, um, you know, from the boxes, maybe not literally movie theater popcorn, but the ones that say movie theater popcorn on the box, they have a decently high amount of calories. I mean, a whole bag, you know, you're looking at 600 calories or something is ridiculous, 500 calories, and it doesn't take that long to eat it. You can literally eat double the amount of popcorn by getting the, um, uh, the smart pop, uh, it's the, the, the brand that starts with an O I think it's an old guy's the logo. I don't know. Um, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've seen it. And, uh, that literally will take you longer to eat again with the low calorie, high dense foods. 
or low calorie dense, high volume foods, it takes you physically longer to eat it, takes up more room in your stomach and you're more entertained the whole time, especially if you think of something like popcorn where you're watching a show or a movie or something and you want you know to just be snacking while you're watching. If you finish that in 10 minutes, you're probably gonna want more. If it takes you, and I'm not kidding, if you eat kernel by kernel, the uh, Smart Pop, that stuff is gonna take you 30 minutes to eat. If it takes you 30 minutes, there's a lot less chance that you're gonna go back for more. So that is a fantastic point or sub point within what he's saying on his uh, first point here. Let's go ahead and hop back into it. Eater, I always eat really fast. I, it's almost to me like food's not gonna exist tomorrow when I'm eating. I mean, I know some of y'all can relate, but if eating the yeah, right foods by definitely. default, it's gonna take you a long time to eat them. If you watch my channel, things like anabolic French toast, the veggie pizza I just put out, that's a really high volume pizza loaded down with protein, does it take you a long time to eat? The anabolic chicken Caesar salad, it's loaded down with protein, it's got chicken, and it's got an entire huge bowl of romaine lettuce. We put a custom dressing on it and the thing tastes incredible. It's like you went to a restaurant and ordered a salad, but all in all, the cow calories on this for the amount of volume are extremely low. This is something I've been trying to employ every day is a massive salad. That's why salads are so such an awesome weight loss food. Um, if you can get the dressing right, uh, which there's a trick to that, you know, there's plenty of videos out there on YouTube for low calorie dressings and finding what works for you. But if you can get the dressing right, usually the dressing and anything fried ruins it. But if you can make sure you use grilled chicken, lots of veggies, I mean, a salad will fill you up. And lettuce and spinach and all that actually has an insane amount of protein for the calories. Very high in protein. So um, especially spinach. Uh, so that's just a, a pro tip for you there. On time to eat it. I can watch a show on YouTube, on Netflix, whatever. And then by the time I'm done, I'm not chaining foods together and just like run into the pantry and trying to find something to eat. And there's even another tip I can give you. Things like protein bars, most specifically the Anabar, best protein bar on the market. Restock coming soon. Follow me on social media. What you can do with these is throw them in the freezer. They're not only incredible that way. I mean, this is like a dessert in the freezer, but it's going to take you longer to eat it. I could eat this Anabar in five seconds if I wanted to, but if I freeze it, it forces me to slow down, enjoy it a little longer. And if you can stretch that time out, you're going to be much better off. So to recap, rule number one, if we're eating higher volume foods that are taking us longer to eat, we're controlling the calories while simultaneously controlling our hunger. We want to give our bodies time to send that signal to our brain. So if you're someone that struggles with this hardcore and you have binge eating problems like I've struggled with my whole life, make those foods bigger and strategically place them in your day where you're most likely to binge and you're going to be way better off. And the second rule, in order to eliminate our hunger at the same time, we have to be able to eliminate our craving. I've been on some crazy strict diets in the past, chicken, rice, broccoli, fish, rice, asparagus, egg white, spinach. That sounds like the last meal they'd give you in hell. But I strictly remember the last time I went on one of those diets. I would sit at night and I would watch Sam the cooking guy on YouTube and just salivate over these foods. I would build up this super unhealthy relationship with foods on my channel. And like when it would come to cheat meal night, I just couldn't wait to have a pizza. I couldn't wait to have donuts. You see it a lot with people to compete. They do these crazy strict diets. They get down in the best shape they possibly can. And they have this list of foods they want to Okay, so this is the big reason why diets, a specific diet where you're only eating certain things and you're removing other things, usually for most people does not work. And um, so the question here, why do diets not work? Why have you probably tried them and you have failed again and again and again and again? And that is exactly what he is talking about here is you have effectively increased your cravings. You can't wait to get to that next meal or you can't wait to eat that food that you're not allowed to have, or it's just, you're thinking about it constantly, constantly, constantly. Now I'm not one to say if you eat it, well, then you're good to go. You no longer are going to have that craving, but whenever you completely remove a food group or you never again have cake, cookies, whatever, there's healthy ways of cooking those things, or there's ways of consuming those things in moderate amounts and, and letting yourself stay on your goals. But when you completely remove them and you crash diet, no wonder you yo-yo back and forth. You can't live that way forever. If it's not sustainable, you're going to crave hardcore and you're going to get right back into that old habit that you used to have, which is just overeating those bad foods. So we have to learn to lower the calories, increase the density of the food or increase the volume of the food, sorry, and lower the calorie density of the food, as again, he is talking about here. And that combination, uh, when applied to good things like cookies, cake, 
pizza, ice cream, whatever, is going to allow you to eat those things. And really your cravings, you don't have cravings when you're participating in the food. Um, now, when you participate in the food and it is, you know, a Papa John's pizza, you're going to, you're not going to be able to lose weight. Sure. You're not going to crave Papa John's pizza anymore, but you're not going to lose weight. So we have to figure out a, a balance between both. And so, um, again, let's hop back into the video afterwards and then when it comes time to actually be off the diet there's no balance there they cut the cardio out and they just start eating whatever is in sight because they build up this super unhealthy obsession with certain types of food and you already know what we do on this channel right well i always preach this there's no craving that we can't crush the right way so you look at my thumbnails you look at the foods i eat if you even if you follow my instagram you see what i'm doing if you're only eating egg whites and spinach for breakfast yep, that's and a stack saying. of chocolate chip waffles looks orgasmic if you haven't eaten pizza for an entire prep then a pizza is probably sounded like heaven on earth and don't even get me started on donuts i mean donuts are good regardless but if you haven't had anything sweet for a while then you're probably sitting around hating your life so what yep. i preach to control those cravings is to simply eat the foods you want but make the better choices this is something that helped me tremendously because i haven't seen this point yet and this i mean this is exactly what i was just saying you got to eat the foods you want but you got to be smart about it if you eat the food you want and you're not smart about it you're just eating like you like everyone else then you're not going to lose weight but you can lose weight, you can have the body you want and still participate in those foods. You just need these good food swaps and I'm sure that's what he's about to get into. Technically in my diet, even though I'm in a deficit, I'm hungry. If there's something specifically I want, like a pizza, like my favorite breakfast or ice cream, I can make it. I just have to make it the right way. So if you're already on this channel. I assume you see the videos I do. You see the thumbnails. You already know what it is. And I recommend if you have diets you've done in the past that haven't worked for you, and you always end up falling off at some point. Give these recipes a try when you need them. Those anabolic and the flurries and the blizzards are incredible. They're loaded with protein. They're going to leave you completely stuffed. The pizzas are also incredible. And once you eat them, once you actually finish them you're gonna be like wow i had pizza today and i'm on a diet and that craving that yep. food that just seems so out of reach you just had it and it wasn't that big of a deal and if you want to make it even easier you can always check out my anabolic cookbook which has every single recipe on this channel broken down so it's just right in your pocket so you got your basically how i eat okay so i want to talk about that real quick question here is how can you make sure that your diet is successful how can you make sure to stay on your diet. And the big takeaway point is you cannot, usually a person is not going to be able to say no to a certain food or certain food group forever. If you're never going to have carbs again, the day you start having carbs again, one day, you are going to go right back to where you were, unless you're able to have those carbs and eat way less. But if you do the things you did before, you're going to end up the way you were before. So you, this has to be sustainable. You hear this from all the good YouTubers. They're, they're telling you this has got to be a sustainable diet. Well, how do you, how do you have a sustainable diet? You're eating in a way that you don't want to eat. How is that ever sustainable by being smarter with the recipes you are making? Now the cookbook that I choose, um, to cook from is Greg Doucette's anabolic cookbook, cookbook 2.0. Um, I usually leave a link for that in the description of all of my uh, recent videos, but again, low calorie dense, high volume foods. And it's the foods you want. You want pizza? Me and my wife are making pizza tonight. And it is going to be roughly this big loaded with chicken and veggies. And I mean, it still has a little bit of red sauce on there. It has fat free cheese. The crust is made out of egg whites. When all of this is combined, you have a pizza that's that big for 350 calories. Not only am I going to eat the entire pizza, but I'm also probably going to need to have something with it just to reach my calories. Do you see what's happening here? Good luck failing on your diet when you're eating pizza and uh, French toast and ice cream and anabolic whatever delicious food you want, hamburgers, but because you've given it effort and you have transformed the calorie amount in that food, you are satisfied and you're, you're actually struggling to reach your calories sometimes. That is a win, win, win. Now, are they as good as Papa John's, Ben and Jerry's, a hot dog you would get from the ballpark? No, it's not as good, but it is almost as good. And I want to make this clear, a successful diet, even when you're doing what I'm talking about here, doesn't involve never having cheesecake factory cheesecake again. It's just a lot rarer because you don't want it as often. 
you know, and actually Cheesecake Factory cheesecake is probably rare anyway for you, but it doesn't involve never having Papa John's or Pizza Hut or whatever again. There is going to be a place at next year's Super Bowl for Papa John's pizza, but for the most of the year, you're not eating Papa John's pizza like you normally would because you're having your own pizza and it really is delicious. If you know, pick your favorite food, if that is a 10 out of 10, you're making eight out of 10 foods. Definitely good enough to satisfy that craving. And just like he was saying just now, you're going to be saying to yourself, I'm on a diet and I had pizza. It's going to be kind of confusing at first. And it's wonderful. And that is when you have found the winning sweet spot, when you get to participate in all these foods, but you're still losing weight. And whenever you see that scale going down, it is a whole lot of fun, guys. I'm telling you, you can do this. And this is the trick. I'm so glad I haven't seen this part of the video yet. I'm so glad this is, you know, the tips he's giving because these are fire. It is really going to help you. Let's go ahead and dive right back into it now and it makes this whole process much easier but if you don't got this don't worry because all the recipes are also on the channel well almost all of them so at this point we are eating the right foods we're eating higher volume foods our hunger should be in a pretty good spot but to ramp it up even further what we need to do is dramatically increase our water intake what Love i it. recommend is that you drink at Fantastic. least a gallon of water a day that is my minimum goal that i set for myself every day and i go over it rather easily check me out man it is about 1 p.m and this is my gallon i start with a full gallon every day we got about a quarter left and that's not playing if you look at okay so i mean i'll disagree with him a little bit uh not like all of you should have a gallon of water i mean that might be hard to get to at first i don't think a gallon's gonna hurt you so try to build up to it just take half your body weight in ounces build up to that habit first if you're not used to drinking water excuse me if you're not used to drinking water build up to half your body weight in ounces first and then you can go past that but the big thing here, how can water help you lose weight? I've just done a video on this recently and the key to water helping you lose weight or why it works is because it literally fills your stomach. It entertains your mouth. All the things that food do, you know, I got, um, this is, uh, flavored water, you know, no calories, no caffeine, no soda. It's just a bunch of zeros. Um, but it literally, instead of eating right now, I'm just going to take a drink of this water and it literally saves you calories throughout the day. But the big thing here, especially when combined with food, I hope he says something about that, especially when combined with food is it fills up your stomach. So imagine eating that pizza I was just talking about, the big pizza. Oh, and you need some more calories because you haven't reached your calories and you drink a big glass of water, calorie free water. Can you imagine all that in your stomach? And then you're trying to reach your calories in the first place. Good luck not losing weight. Good luck not winning with this whole mentality. This is perfect. You combine these, these, uh, efforts all into, you know, the, the circle that he's talking about these five tips. I mean, he's hitting them all. He's doing great. When you combine this good luck, not succeeding, you're just going to crush it on your diet goals. So water is so key to helping you lose weight. Let's hop back into the video. It's a little cloudy and that's because I flavor it because I think just drinking plain water all day isn't what I like to do. So when it's got some flavor, it's much easier to get down. And I do that by putting two scoops of Final Boss Aminos in there. Finalbossformance.com could RGF 10 will save you 10%, but you don't necessarily have to use aminos. There's plenty of zero calorie drink enhancers you can get at your local grocery. I just like this because two scoops is perfect and it lasts me forever. And what's gonna happen when you up your water intakes is it's gonna fill your stomach up more. It's gonna make it harder to eat a lot of food. You're gonna have a lot in there to begin with. Think of it this way. Have you ever went out and you've eaten a lot of really bad food? You went off the rails. You're completely stuffed. And you realize out of nowhere that you're super thirsty and you chug a bunch of water, not even really considering what that's going to do to your stomach. And next thing you know, you are some of the most miserable you've ever been. <laughs> exactly. So imagine yeah. if you were drinking that water all day and you go out and you try to binge, you're going to reach that full point much yep. sooner. And a lot of times too, our stomach yep. can send weird signals to our brain telling us that we're hungry when we're actually just a little dehydrated. There's some crazy statistics. I don't have the number right here. There's a high percentage of people that walk around chronically dehydrated all day. So not only is the water going to help our hunger, but it helps everything. Being well hydrated is going to help you with a myriad of things. So if you someone has been, if you are thirsty, uh, if you ever feel thirsty, it, it's too late at that point. Like you've already like go drink water. It's not too late to drink water, but, um, you are already dehydrated. You should never be thirsty. You should make the habit of just taking that action to drink water. And like he said, flavor it, please. 
Um, I have flavor packets, pitcher packets, these things like I just brought up as well. Um, lots of different ways. I almost, I do drink plain water, but it's right around my workout. I don't like flavored water around my workout, but um, yeah, that, that helpful tip. We'll just get back into it. Been neglecting that water, make sure you get it in. And another pro tip for me at night, if I'm out of calories or also want to expand my stomach or yeah. have something along with a meal, give myself a little treat, but also attack mm -hmm. that hunger. I'll drink tons of zero calorie sodas. The same yep. diet Coke, caffeine free. My main go to's are diet Coke, diet root beer, and diet seven up because they don't have caffeine. So I'm not worried about like drinking one before bed and then uh, being jittery in bed, not being able to sleep. So, pro tip right here. Oh man, fantastic. Uh, this is a good, a good talking point as well. Does diet soda prevent you from losing weight? The answer is 100% no. In fact, it helps tremendously. It has that sweet flavor where it's going to be giving you a treat. Uh, it entertains your mouth. Instead of eating, you are now drinking something that has zero calories. A really smart choice is to do something without caffeine so that right before bed where we are most prone to eating snacks you're able to have a, I mean, unless caffeine doesn't affect you at all. And studies show that it, it really affects people. So be careful with that. It can sap you of your sleep and sleep is so important to your weight loss, but caffeine free, sugar free diet soda, Coke. Um, I mean, anything dark sodas, light sodas, doesn't matter. Sugar free, caffeine free. If it has those two things, it is going to help you tremendously. It's going to literally fill your stomach. It's going to satisfy some type of sweet tooth during the one time or, or one of the highest times where we have a sweet tooth right before bed or, or at night or watching a movie or whatever. And again, as, as he was just alluding to, if you drink them throughout the day, now don't go crazy. I mean, I don't know. I don't want you drinking 20. It just seems like a bad idea. But if you drink a couple throughout the day, you are going to be um, constantly rewarding yourself, if you will, without the detriment of calories. That is so key. So diet soda does not hurt your progress. And I don't really want to hear or talk about the fact that it's unhealthy and causes cancer or whatever. That just, you know, what's going to kill you is being obese. You know, what's going to kill you is chronically being overweight and eating horrible pizzas or smoking cigarettes. Those there's the way worse things. Okay, so let's we can worry about the health of diet soda after we lose our 50 to 100 pounds. Okay, let's go ahead and first tackle the things that are literally the, the thing that is literally sitting on our organs killing us, and that is our body fat. Let's get rid of that, then we can talk about the health of diet soda. But for now, enjoy your diet soda, lose the weight, satisfy that sweet tooth, fill your stomach. Man, this is awesome! Win, win, win. You got this. Get some diet soda, caffeine free stock up on it, have some fun. Let's get back in the video. Oh man, I feel like everybody watching is in a really good spot. We're taking something away from this. And this next one is gonna Fantastic blow video, your mind. If you had to think about the single best way to eliminate hunger, to help control it, to keep yourself from being so dang hungry, the logical answer to that would be to just simply eat more, right? If you're eating more, you're less hungry because you're eating more. Makes sense, right? How do we eat more? Well, what I do to allow myself to eat more is I do cardio every... Wonderful. Look these the new billion dollar. Wonder. Solar I know I'm gonna let him keep talking, but uh, super powerful solar panels that was every I'm single gonna, day. I'm stop I know some of y'all might have just checked out after me saying that, but hear me out. The majority of us are pretty dang sedentary. I'm not sure the average age of the people that watch this channel, but I would say if you're out of high school, you're probably pretty sedentary unless your job requires otherwise. Which means we're not burning very many calories. Yep. Okay. Think about it. When you were, uh, he just mentioned it. When you were in high school. Uh, when you were younger, you probably moved a whole lot more. So you didn't struggle with your weight then. Now I know a lot of people will just blame their metabolism. It's not your metabolism. It's that you're moving less, you've lost muscle, and now you're burning less calories throughout the day because you have less muscle because you moved less. We got to move more. And what he's talking about here specifically is more cardio. And again, as, as he said, don't check out. How can you allow yourself to eat more? What is the number one benefit that cardio gives us for weight loss? That is that we can literally consume more food. We can stay on our goals. Now, 
research has shown that high intensity interval training, although it does burn more calories, it doesn't burn enough to make the negative side effect worth it, which is increased hunger. When you do high intensity interval training or high intensity cardio, you are going to be hungrier throughout the day. When you do steady state cardio and you burn 300, 400, 500 calories, and as you get more fit and you ramp that up and it, it, your moderate intensity is now what would have been your high intensity and you're burning even more calories. You can literally get to the point where you're burning a thousand calories in a single hour of cardio. And now you're able to consume an extra 500 calories and still be at a 500 calorie deficit from what you used to be. That is the number one thing cardio gives us in terms of weight loss. Yes, it burns calories and that is so important. But the number one thing cardio gives us is the ability to eat more. Because think about it, what costed you your goals last time you failed at your weight loss? It was probably that you ate too much, right? You ate, you felt bad, you you considered it, you, you fell off your diet. Well, if we can eat more food, we are better suited to stay on our diet. The more you can eat in terms of volume and calories, which is what all of these tips are about, the more likely you are to stay on your diet forever. It is sustainable. So we need to move more. There is another thing that we can do though, outside of just more cardio. So how can we increase our calorie burn throughout the day, not just with cardio? And that is called NEAT. I don't exactly know what NEAT stands for, but it is non-exercise, excess calories. Um, I'll look it up here real quick. Uh, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. N-E-A-T, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So the um, how does moving more throughout the day help you with your weight loss goals? Or what can you do that is kind of like a secret to help you eat more food? And that is increase your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. What that means is you're just simply moving more. You're taking the stairs instead of the elevator. You're bobbing your head to music. You are, uh, you know, I mean, don't go crazy and fidget and tap your foot and annoy your coworkers or anything, but you're literally moving more. You're parking in the back of the parking lot. You're going on a daily light walk. It doesn't even need to be exercise. It's just moving more. And this goes back to your high school, your probably younger than high school days where, I mean, remember when, when we were kids, at least kids my age and younger, we were outside all the time. We didn't struggle with our weight very much because we could eat. I mean, do you remember how much you used to eat as a kid or maybe your kids now or whatever? I'm sure you can relate to this in some way. Kids eat a ton and it's not because they're their uh, metabolism is so fast. That's what we love to say, but it's because they're moving so much. They're burning so many calories and they have that muscle because they're moving. And that is what makes up your metabolism. It's when you get older and you stop moving, that your metabolism slows down and you stop burning those extra calories. So a good secret, something you can do without adding a lick of cardio is to move more throughout the day. And that is, again, your neat. And that is an awesome pro tip. Let's hop back into the video. Calories in a day, we are simply just not. The goal of the cardio, right, not only is it super healthy, I mean, come on, man, if you haven't done no exercise in a while and you just add in 20 minutes of cardio a day, 30 minutes, it's better for your heart, it's better for your metabolism, you're gonna sleep better, it's better for everything. But the prime benefit is gonna be that your total daily energy expenditure will actually go up, which means that your body now needs more calories in a day to stay the exact same weight, which means you have a little more wiggle room to add those calories back in your diet while still creating a deficit. For me personally, Personally, I do 40 minutes of cardio a day. This allows me to eat about 3,000 calories a day without me actually gaining weight. If I did, I think a good uh, reminder here, real quick, is he is literally talking daily. Our bodies are not designed, you know, maybe I'll talk about this for a second. Our bodies are not designed to not move. We are designed by God to move every single day. I don't know where this thought came in of, hey, rest days. I'm not saying it has to be intense cardio or intense exercise every single day, but I don't know where this came from where, you know, on Sundays, we're just, we're not going to do anything. I mean, literally the Sabbath, I recommend 
honoring the Sabbath. It is nice just to have that rest, but not from moving. We're not literally supposed to sit on the couch and do nothing. That's not honoring God with our bodies. So he's talking about every day. I'm pretty sure what he's, maybe he won't specifically bring it up, but he's talking about seven days a week, seven out of seven every single week. Now it doesn't literally mean you have to work out every single day of your life. You will have an off day or two, but don't plan on it. Every Wednesday and Sunday, I'm not going to exercise at all. At least go for a walk. You will burn more calories, be able to eat more on a consistent basis, and you will succeed on your goals when you are literally focused on, you know what, instead of TV, I'm going to move. That is going to be very good for you. Let's hop back in the video. Didn't do that cardio, I would assume probably be closer to like 2200, which means I'd have to die at around like 1800. And that's with no cardio, which sounds pretty miserable. And your cardio doesn't have to be crazy. You don't got to go run around the block. You don't got to do nothing like that, yep. man. You can yep. buy one of those cheap mini steppers that I have sitting in my closet that I bought an old video, did a review on it. You can watch it. It's like 30, $40 at Walmart. And you can just set that up in your house and do a little cardio that way. Richard Jim, set that incline up and just walk on the treadmill, burn mm -hmm. some calories, hop on the stair stepper, hop on the elliptical. You don't got to kill yourself. Just get on there, work up a sweat, breathe hard, and you know that it's doing something. And my ultimate tip with that. Okay. So that's a really good talking point. Um, does cardio have to be hard for you to lose weight? And just as, as he was saying there, no, it does not. In fact, steady state cardio, uh, uh, done, done, doing a level of cardio that allows you to go for at least 30 minutes, but is challenging. That is the sweet spot because you're going for 30 minutes to an hour. You're that length of time. You are burning a lot of calories and you're not wearing yourself out. High intensity interval training. First off, usually we're not high intensity as what high as what the studies are showing with high intensity. But whenever you are training really, really hard, you're too exhausted to go for very long. What are you going to do? 30 seconds and then you rest for two minutes and then you do 30 seconds and you rest for two minutes or 30 seconds in a minute. Your total amount actually ends up being less per minute. Sure. The high intensity is higher, but you can't last as long. And then your energy sapped. And then next tomorrow's workout, that's just horrible. I don't want to do that again. That was miserable. Whereas with steady state, we just get on, we crank the treadmill up to, um, to a higher incline and a moderate speed. And you just walk, listen to some music, listen to a, I mean, I listen to sermons, Listen to a podcast, watch a show on your phone if you have access to Wi-Fi or something in your gym. These are all hacks to make cardio more sustainable and more doable. You don't have to kill yourself. And I think that is such a key because when you start to do cardio really hard, you start to really not look forward to the workout. And whenever you don't look forward to the workout, you miss workouts. Whenever you miss workouts, you fall off your diet and it's a negative snowball. Whereas if you can actually enjoy the experience, say, you know what, I'm going to go now, don't get me wrong. It has to be a moderate intensity. You want to be doing something. This is different from the last tip where you're just moving more by simply taking a walk or going upstairs. This has to be an activity that you are actually giving effort to. And that is challenging. I would say a six to seven out of 10 intensity. Um, if, if you were to judge yourself how hard you work, and I would say a six to seven out of 10, but if you can do that, you can enjoy it. You don't have to kill yourself. You're not going to dread it the next day and you can do it every single day and burn more calories and eat more food and succeed on your weight loss goals. So let's go ahead and uh, keep watching the video here. That is to find a show on Netflix or something like that you can watch on your phone while you're doing it. Today, I watched Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz from like 2008. Not sure what year that was, but I watched that on my phone. The whole thing, and it took about 40 minutes. I watched it, it was great, and by the time it was done, boom, cardio's done. So make something you enjoy, tie a show to it, and it's gonna make it way easier, and you're gonna be able to eat more, and you're gonna be less hungry. We just knocked those first four tips out of the park, man. I'm telling you, if you haven't been implementing any of those in your Seriously, diet, those four tips alone. And start with those. If you do that, nothing but positive things are going to happen. I swear. Now, the fifth thing that I think we can all do to control our hunger and help us eat less, stay in a deficit, all that stuff, is to simply stay busier. And busy can uh, be a lot of things, really. That can be cleaning the house. That can be taking the dog for a walk. That can be going to see a friend. That can be maybe going to the grocery store. It can be doing yard work. It can be a lot of different things that get our mind off of the food. I've this is a cool tip. I mean... I, you know, it wasn't on my mind. This is the one tip that wasn't, you know, something I would give, but I mean, he's right. 
uh, you know, when do you snack? It's when you are literally bored. Um, so staying busy will literally help your mind stay busy as well. But this goes back to, I don't know, two points ago with the NEAT, the non-exercise um, activity thermogenesis, where you're just increasing the amount of calories you burn throughout the day. What he just described, cleaning the house, um, yard work, that is literally stuff that is going to be burning calories instead of sitting on the couch, allowing you to eat more. At the same time, you're too busy during those activities to eat. So you are not eating during those times. I mean, this is a, a great uh, tag team here to help you eat less. And that is the goal. That is the ultimate goal with weight loss is to simply eat less than you burn. Now, again, if you're, if you're too sedentary and you're having to eat a thousand calories, 900 calories to lose weight, you know, if you're a small female and you have 50 pounds to lose and you're down to 900 calories, you're like, I can't do this. And no one blames you. You got to increase your calorie burn, which will allow you to eat more. So a fantastic um, tip here as well. I want to finish out, see what he's saying. And then I'm going to probably close out this video. This live stream's almost done. So uh, let's uh, see what he says here. I know a lot of people are this way. My cravings are worst and I'm most likely to give in and cheat on my diet and get the most hungry when I am bored. If I'm just by my house all day and I have nothing to do and I'm laying on the couch and Netflix is on, I'm just laying there. My brain's like, well, how can we spice this up? And nine times out of 10, uh, the answer to that is bad food. True, and you got to look true. at it this way. Have you ever had one of those days that's a little different than a regular day? Maybe you have to wake up early, you take the dog to the vet, then you got to run to the gym, then you got to meet a friend real quick, then you get the car washed, you just have this day that is booked with things that you're doing. And by the time you get home, you're like, holy cow, I've barely eaten today. And that's because hunger wasn't really on your mind. You were busy. You were doing other things. You didn't have time to slow down and just really get those gears turned in and let that hunger kick up. And we don't got to be busy for busy's sake. You can actually do things that are going to make your life better. They're going to help you like not only improve your day to day, but it's going to help you stay to your diet. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of doing something every day to make my position in life a little better. Whether I'm filming a video, going to the gym, which is a daily thing, or even just watching a YouTube video and trying to learn something about a diet, about an exercise, whatever. I always want to make myself that much better every day. And if you can parlay that into your diet, you're keeping yourself busy, maybe with a new hobby that actually makes you happy, you get fulfillment from, or maybe that's just taking your girlfriend on a date, going to the park, going for a walk, getting her some flowers. I don't know, but I'm not a relationship guy. But what I'm saying is, is that busy can take a lot of forms. And I think laying on the couch all day, not burning calories, having those cravings knocking on our brain door all day telling us we need something we can easily throw that to the side and do something okay so all that is what i already um was talking about so we'll uh, go ahead and end his portion of the video there but that was a fantastic video those first four tips were spot on keeping busy is is, is uh, great as well they just kind of so so much bleed into the other ones um but especially when you're keeping busy with physical things you're playing right into your whole weight loss goals all those tips we were talking about really tag team well together and are going to help you eat less calories. So guys, that is the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Willie, I see that you are here. Look at that. I listen to Four Faith Fitness live on YouTube during my steady state cardio workouts. Well, I know that's live. This is only my second live. But um, yeah, I mean, watch my watch some of my videos. You know, uh, that, that'll help you get education while you are walking on the treadmill, while you are doing whatever. You know, actually, I want to bring something up. Uh, you know, your comment just reminded me of it. Um, there isn't, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with high intensity of, this wasn't what your comment was about, but I'm not saying there's anything wrong with high intensity interval training, high intensity cardio or high intensity activity. Um, if you're looking to be healthy and super fit and you're looking to crush it, high intensity stuff is great. I'm saying for a person who has a lot of weight to lose uh, or, or even they just want to lose 10, 15 pounds and, and they're not looking to be like an athlete or to, you know, run faster to their first paintball bunker. I know Willie is a paintballer. Um, whatever you are looking to do, uh, if you're looking to accomplish a, a fitness goal or I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not coming up with the word, a fitness achievement, let's say a tough mud or something like that. You are going to want to train more intense, you know, constantly steady state isn't going to train you for those things. This is more of a weight loss centric video, but I don't want to pick too much on high intensity interval training. That's that's fan I don't want to get that 
you know, mixed up. That's a fantastic way of exercising. If it is for performance and you want to be a, a better tennis player or whatever, let's say you love tennis, you're going to lose weight. You play enough tennis, all these things that we're talking about, you combine this with tennis. Oh my gosh, you're never going to struggle with your weight. So let's say you're like, I'm getting into this. I'm 35. I want to, uh, you know, I'm 40. I'm getting older, whatever. I want to be able to get to that ball quicker. You're going to have to train some high intensity stuff. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just, we don't want to train that way. I mean, you'll see on YouTube all the time. That's what they do. 10 minute hit workout in the morning, lose belly fat. That ain't going to happen. You know, you're not going to lose belly fat with 10 minutes a day of high intensity interval training. In fact, if you were training to be a better athlete, you're not going to train for 10 minutes a day there either. That's just clickbait stuff. That's not going to help you at all. Um, so that's the stuff I'm saying, to, I'm saying to stay away from. And then if every single day, seven days a week, you're going in there and crushing it, no athlete does that either. So we want to be careful with the amount of high intensity, but anyways, I'm hitting this point way too hard. High intensity isn't bad. I wanted to make sure I made that clear. It's just most of the time for most of you, for most of my audience, you are going to want to be doing steady state cardio. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, as always, I'm not sure how these live videos uh, end with the comments. And if you leave prayer requests in the chat, do that, does that translate to the comments? But I want to start making it a habit. I have a notebook specifically for my YouTube prayer requests. I have seen awesome miracles. I've seen God work miracles, um, uh, personally, you know, a few times, um, around me, uh, for me once or twice, I'm sure, you know, um, that's just not coming to my head, but God is a God of miracles. If you have a prayer request, please leave them in the chat or leave them in the comment section on the replay of this. I add those prayer requests to a book and I have a, an old book with prayer requests in them from, you know, the years of people commenting on my videos. Um, but if you have a prayer request, leave it in the comment section. I literally write it down. I only pray over one page a day, but I pray over the book every day. And so God knows he doesn't need me specifically praying for every prayer request every single day. I don't have that power. He has that power. So if you need anything, if you're looking for weight loss, you know, if you're looking for help, whatever you're looking for, um, please, uh, leave the comments. Um, and then I would like to pray for it. And then when it happens, please read when, when, whatever, when God solves that problem or, takes away the need to solve that problem or whatever he does, because he is a God that answers prayers. Um, you come back to the video, let me know. And I would love uh, just to celebrate with you that God um, has answered your prayer request. So guys, thank you so much again. Um, I am going to be back on the next one. I'm going to be taking this video, chopping it down to smaller videos. So you're going to see me releasing some, uh, some good stuff, I hope, with some better thumbnails. And I'm hoping to ramp up my YouTube game. Live streaming setup is going to be a lot better than my phone and this uh, little mic. So um, I'm hoping to be getting there and bringing you guys some good stuff. Thank you so much. God bless. Like I said, leave your prayer requests in the comments. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one.